Okay, so something quite different to what Alexis has been talking about. I want to talk about gambling. <laughs> now, a small disclaimer. I'm not actually telling you to go out and gamble while you're underage. That's not something you should be doing. But if you happen to be at a casino night, so I know Toynbee has one, or if you happen to be at a party where it's a casino theme, if you want to be the person that comes out on top, whether it's real money or fake money, I recommend employing these kind of tactics. So I'm going to talk about blackjack today. Um, 21. Um, you may have heard it called pontoon with slightly different rules. My two, well, favourite, I say favourite, but the most games I find most interesting at the casino are poker and blackjack. And well, I would talk about poker, but I can't really understand the maths behind the papers that I've written, so yeah, I'm going to go with blackjack. <laughs> so my aim is in this 10, 15 minutes talk to take you as a group who I assume don't have much knowledge of blackjack. Uh, some of you may know how to play, some of you may know the rules, some of you may know how to do everything I'm about to talk about, I don't actually know. But the aim is to take you through beginner to winner, I know it's cheesy, but beginner to winner, which in blackjack's case is synonymous with cheating. So I want to, you to be able to play, to be able to play well, and then to be able to win, which is cheating. As I just said. So, how do you play blackjack? It's an incredibly simple game. It's not like poker where you're playing against other people at a table. It is you versus the dealer. That, that's all that happens. There may be other people sitting at your table, but you are just playing one-on-one -on -one with that person in front of you. And really, you're not even playing against a person, because that dealer doesn't make any personal decisions. They literally have a set of plays that they must, they must do every time they see their cards, and that's decided by the casino. So basically, you are playing versus this establishment. And let's face it, casinos are there to make money. That's their job. They are a franchise. They want to make a profit. When you go in there, they are aiming to take your money. They're not aiming to let you win. And that's why we need to start thinking a bit more smartly if you want to actually go in and win. If the games are set up for you to lose. Blackjack, as a game, if you walked in there as a random person and you just started playing, you didn't really know what you were doing. The house, um, which is the casino, has an innate 2% advantage over you. So in, in the long run, you may win some hands, you may lose some hands, you may gain a little bit of money, lose some money. The casino should always come out on top. Now, I want to teach you to play, and th that's when the casino has a 2% advantage <laughs> over you. I then want to teach you how to play well. And by well, I actually mean perfectly. But I'll, I'll come on to that. And that lowers the advantage down to 0.5%, which is still in their favor, and they will win against you in the long run. But then that's where cheating comes in. If you cheat, I, I, I say cheat loosely because it's not actually illegal. <laughs> it, it's not technically illegal, but they're not going to be very pleased with you. Um, I'll talk about that later. But that actually brings the odds into your favor, which is why the casinos don't actually like you doing it. So playing um, blackjack, everyone is dealt, everyone at the table is dealt two cards. You see your two cards. The dealer themselves has one face down card and one face up card. You can see the face up card. You take the value of the card in front of you. So say it's a 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's the value that that card has. Any of the picture cards, the royalties, have a value of 10. And an ace has a value of 1 or 11, depending on what you want it to be. It's, it's probably the best card. And the aim is to get as close to 21 as possible without going over, but also getting more than the dealer. It's really quite simple. So if you're playing against the dealer and you are dealt a king and a five, so king's pitch card is worth 10, it's worth 15. Your hand is worth 15. And you can see that the dealer has a six. Now, you've walked into a casino, you don't know how to play, and you think, OK, so I've got 15. What does that mean? OK, I'm six off 21. I might want another card, because a six, a five, a four, a three, a two, or an ace is going to give me a higher total. But then you're thinking, what are they going to have? Because I don't really need to get 21. I just need to beat them. Really, it comes down to sort of a personal decision that hasn't really got much backing to it. So that's what I want to change. So in this case, you have a decision to make. I'm assuming you don't know the maths behind it at this point. So your decision is, one, you can stick. It's either called sticking or standing with that hand. So you keep 15 points and you say, I think I can beat your hand with 15. 
you either then, the other option, the, the one most people know about, is hitting or twisting, which is when you ask for another card from the dealer to add to your total. If you then take that card and your hand goes over a total of 21, you're bust, you lose the hand. There are other options which come into play. If both of the cards you were dealt were the same, you can split them into two hands. Say you had two eights, you could split and play each of the eights as a separate hand. It, it, it gets a little bit more complicated. If you think you're going to win, you can do this thing called doubling down. You double your initial bet and say, whatever the next card is that comes, I'm going to stick with it. And, and, and again, I'll talk about that later. And the other thing that some casinos let you do is surrender your hand as soon as you see the, the other cards, because you think, the chance of me winning is so slim that I might as well give in. And if the casino lets you do this, then you get half of your money back. So that's how to play. I, some of you may know how to do that. It's, quite, it's a very, very, very simple game. But this is, this is the thing. Most people just play blackjack. Most people don't know how to play well or perfectly. And it comes down to maths. Um, some of you may not like maths. But I do like maths. <laughs> and you work out the probability of you winning a hand do playing certain ways. So in this situation, if I've got a king and a five, what is mathematically the best option for me? So should I stick? Should I twist? Should I double down? Should I surrender? Without knowing any of this stuff, you, you have no clue. But in each case, there is a best option. This isn't to say that every time you take that option, you will win that hand. It's just to say that if you did play this same hand over and over and over and over again, you would get the best outcome by playing this way. And there's a lot of maths been done to create a table that looks like this. And this is what all good blackjack players will, will live by. It's called, it's called basic strategy, but really it allows you to play blackjack perfectly. And it's just a simple table. So on the left, you see your starting hand, if you've got a total of 8, 9, 10, so on. Um, and you see the dealer's up card, so the face-up card, you should always respond in said way. So, in our original hand, we had a king and a five, so that's a 15, facing up against a six. So if you see 15 on the left, and come across to six, come across to six, we see that we should always stick, or stand, as it says there. Now this isn't obvious. You wouldn't be able to just know that, unless you've done the maths. You do get some quite weird Quite, quite weird outcomes when you do the maths. You see, um, there are only four hands in the entire of blackjack that you should actually surrender because there's so little chance of you winning. So, for example, here's a jack six versus an ace. Total of 16 versus an ace. You should surrender it. There's so little the chance of you winning that you should just throw it away. Here's an ace four facing up against a nine. Now, ace four is a special hand because it can either total 11 plus 4 or 1 plus 4. So you need to look here. Ace 4 facing up against what was it? A 9. Ace 4 against 9, you should hit. And this is what all blackjack players have in their head, or on the table even, I think. Um, you literally just play the game like this. And because casinos know that, they obviously still make it so it's in their advantages, like I said, 0.5%. So you may think that because you can mathematically play blackjack. And that, that's what the casinos do. That's how they decide what the dealers play. But it's quite a boring game. So this is where cheating comes in. Now, some of you have probably heard of counting cards. Um, it's in, been in a lot of movies. Um, usually, the person counting cards is grabbed by the bruises of the casino and beaten up for doing it. But technically, it's not illegal. Um, they can ask you to leave because they don't want you as a customer but they can't actually get the law involved in most states, I think. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't hold me to that. Um, so what do I mean by counting cards? I don't literally mean counting the number of cards that come out of the deck. There's always going to be 52 in one deck. But I mean counting the value of the cards that come out. You may have noticed from the table back here that cards with a value of 10, or aces, are the best cards to get in a hand of blackjack. So if we can predict that the next card that comes out is likely to be a 10 or an ace, then we have a better chance of winning. Our hand will be better. Therefore, if we can do that, 
consistently, we might want to raise our bet when there's a better chance of us winning the hand. And this is exactly what card counting does with a very simple system. So it recognizes that the cards, two, three, four, five, six, they're, they're bad cards. If, if they come out either, either in your hand or on the dealer's hand, you know that because those cards have been taken out of the deck, played, and returned to the bottom, that it is more likely that the next hand will contain a 10 card. So every time you see a 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, you add 1 to this count that you've got in your head. You start at 0 when you sit down at the table, because the deck is just as it was. And the position that you are in as a better relatively changes by the cards that come out. So it's 7, 8, 9. They, they don't really matter. They're, they're neutral cards. They're, they're neither good nor bad. But the big cards, so 10, Jack, Queen, King, Ace, you take one away um, from your score, from, from the count that you've got in your head. So a high number, a high count, um, as, as the cheats would say, is a hot deck, because the card that comes out is likely to be favorable to you. <coughs> so if a card comes out that's a 10, Jack, Queen, King, Ace, you're not going to get that next time, so there's a least chance you're going to win. So this is how card counting works. It's literally going up and down in steps of one. It really is that easy. So if you had this hand, so a jack six um, with a seven, um, you would choose to hit by the earlier table. Just trust me, you would. Um, I can, you hit and you get given a king. You've gone bust. Now, a normal player would go, oh, well, I've lost the hand, that's bad. But the person who's counting cards isn't, ha isn't sad at losing a single hand, because each hand that's played gives them more information, more information to work with for future hands. So you see that a king has come out, so it's less likely you're gonna get a 10 in the next hand. So you might lower your bet. It depends on which system you're playing. You would lower the stakes because there's less chance of you winning. The way that some people do this is they work as a team. They get one of their friends to go to a table, play small bets, really winning some, losing some, not really making any net change, but always counting. And as soon as they see that a deck has got a count that's maybe above 10, so a very, very hot deck, they'll call their friend over who will start playing big bets. And then as soon as the deck cools down again, the player who's winning the money will leave. So it's very easy, but we're all going to give it a go. Can you turn the lights off? OK. I have three slash four videos. Um, so I want us all to try and count cards. Because the aim is to be able for you to be able to go into a casino at the end of this and make some money. Can we pause that? How do I even pause? Don't have pause on the way. No. No, no, what? What? No, I didn't pause. Didn't pause. Did it just stop it? Yeah, it was <laughs> Okay, so I've written it out for you there. Two, three, four, five, six, plus one. So start with zero in your head. <laughs> if you see a two, a three, a four, five, or a six, <laughs> add one. It really is that easy. Believe me, it'll get harder. It really it seems really easy, but it will get harder. Seven, eight, nine, zero, all the rest, minus one. This first one is incredibly slow. So if you were doing this at a casino, you wouldn't be able to do it out loud. You wouldn't be able to use your fingers to count. So please don't do that. So please try it in your head, and then at the end, see if you can tell me what the count is for this set of cards. OK? Yeah, go for it. <laughs> Just like starting. Click again. Slight technical difficulties. <laughs> okay, you go, you go, you go. Excuse the camera work, it wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't count out loud. <laughs> this is this is really really slow. <coughs> I can hear people whispering. You can't count out loud. <laughs> <laughs> What was the count? Four. Who said six? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Can 
difficulty. Okay, shh. Okay, I, I admire the confidence of whoever that was that shouted six. But, but it was four. So, that was, that was meant to be a really easy introduction to doing it. Um, to simulate the conditions in a casino, I've added music, it may or may not work, knowing the, the computer, but um, to the next video, and I've also dealt them slightly faster. So, try and keep count this time, but it will be more difficult. Again, starting from zero. <coughs> next slide. Yeah, yeah, next slide. I don't, I don't want to touch it in case you... Is that, is that yeah. next slide? That looks yeah. like it. Okay, so watching. <laughs> Okay. Okay, the music is deliberately distracting. Okay, a lot of people seem to be putting up two fingers. Is that because you think it's two? Or two. Two. Okay. So that was slightly harder. I can hear less people shouting out the right answer. It was two, it was two. Well done. Okay. There is, there is one more video. There is one more video. Except there are actually stakes to this one. The, the person who shouts out the right answer first to this, there is actually a prize which Glamorous Assistant Luca has. <laughs> it's a 15 pound iTunes voucher. I, I do have two versions of this video, because the first one is incredibly fast. I'd be very impressed if someone could count it. We've only done it a few times. Okay, go, go for it. Yeah, this is Okay. I've got a feeling you, know, you can stop guessing now. <laughs> I've got a feeling none of you actually counted that. Um, I think we'll do it with the other version actually. Okay, the next video is, is the same count but with music. It's slightly less fast. Okay, the actual person who I heard shout out first, and I'm quite amazed, does, um, is Paul. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! I was looking the right thing. <laughs> the answer minus three. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, okay, well done, Paul. I don't know if you actually counted or you whack it. Um, obviously, this isn't what's going to be happening in casino. Um, you're not going to be playing. There's not going to be blasting music playing. That was just to distract you. <laughs> really, that was just to, to show you that you're going to have to be playing two games at the same time. Every hand you're playing perfectly. Um, you're looking at the cards and you're thinking in your head of that table. But you're also trying to keep in your head at the same time this running count that tells you how to play in the future which is actually quite hard to do. So that was just me trying to simulate it in the best way possible. So, of course, there are limitations in the real world to being able to use this at casinos. They've obviously wised up a bit. So instead of using one deck, they might say use, say, eight, which makes it slightly less likely that just because a count is slightly positive, you're going to get a good card. They also have these automatic shufflers. So you put all the cards in, and between every single hand, eight decks are mixed together, which makes this completely pointless. Um, but say you're at a small casino or you're at a small event, you could win some money using this. And it has actually been done 
to great effect. People have won quite literally millions doing this. There's, there's one guy I saw on the internet, he paid his way through university by playing blackjack. Um, if you are interested in this in any way whatsoever, I do recommend this movie, 21. Some of you may have seen it. Because this is, what, this is how I found out about card counting. It, it, it is very Hollywood, and the guy in front does get beaten up quite badly for counting cards by a mean-looking guy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's, I told you the start. <laughs> but if you have enjoyed it at all, go win some money and watch this film. Thank you. <laughs>